The little story this week is called Wedding Theft. I hope you like it. Gunner, why are you always late? Benson said, straightening my pink bow tie. I'm the one getting married, but you're the mess. We were in the groom's changing rooms at the Spring Hills Reception Center. The groom, me, the other three groomsmen, and the father of the groom all changed into our tuxedos here. I'm sorry, I said. I dropped a ring and... As long as you have the rings, Benson said, that's all that's important. You can tell me the whole story later. I'm supposed to be out there. You're supposed to be out there. Everybody I know is already there. I know, I know, I said, but can you believe it's finally today? You're getting married now. Stop it, Benson said, standing stiff, hand holding his lapel on his white tux. You'll scare the hell out of me. The bride cries. The groom has to be stoic and strong. And the best man, I said, has to give one hell of a toast, and you've got that covered, right? Benson said, stepping back to survey my poor tie. It's the best I can do with a tie. Come on. As I passed a mirror, I glanced in it and wished I hadn't. Benson looked amazing in his white tux and pink cummerbund and pink tie. He had a pink rose attached to his lapel. How did I get so dirty? I looked like a mechanic playing dress up, which I was. I had dirt smudges all over my black tux, my face, my pink cummerbund, my shirt, and my bow tie. The pink rose on my lapel? I think I had scraped it off, rescuing the ring. My bow tie wouldn't lie flat, and it had a strange ruffle in it. It had rotated 90 degrees. No matter how I tugged on it, it looked bad. I squinted and turned to survey my side. Great. I had torn out the left seam on my tux too. That's one deposit gone. We walked into the hallway where Benson's dad ushered us past the milling people and into the chaos of the reception hall. Benson's little old great-grandmother, everybody called her Granny Nessie, wrestled with a walker. I took her arm and said, Allow me, ma'am. You're the guy who came in late on that fancy motorbike, she said. She's a classic Harley Davidson, ma'am, I said. I rebuilt her myself, custom made some of the parts, that bike has one smooth ride. Oh my, she said. I wish I was 60 years younger and you could give me a ride. We'd make all the girls jealous. You'd have to compete with my boyfriend, I said. He wouldn't stand a chance against me, she said, standing like a model, or as close as she could with her walker and hunchback. I helped her to her seat and made sure she could reach her walker. She wore an almost neon green pantsuit with an old-fashioned hat with faded silk flowers and a simple half veil. At least she didn't wear pink. Everything else in the hall was pink. Lots of white and pink flowers, white and pink lights. The bridesmaids wore white and pink strapless gowns. All the groomsmen wore black tuxes and pink everything else. Guess what Tiana's, the bride's, favorite color is? Guess what color I don't like? Guess who Tiana doesn't like? I kept my tongue to myself, mostly. We took our places at the front of the room. A piano player played some creepy classical piece accompanied by a cellist. Everyone wore their Sunday best. Most of them wore pink because Tiana requested that on her invite. A man stood front and center, center ready to perform the ceremony. Did Tiana and Benson do this on purpose? Look who was officiating at the wedding. My stomach suddenly had a brick stuffed inside it. Judge Andrew Williams stood at attention, holding a Bible. He wore a classic black suit and a gentle smile. Until he saw me, the smile turned into a very stern frown. Judge, I said respectfully. Gunner, Judge Williams said coolly. I hadn't been in trouble for two years, but most people wouldn't forget my little stunts, like 
joyriding, a little shoplifting, lots of graffiti, trespassing, public nuisance, fighting, underage intoxication, dropping out of school, that kind of thing. But most of it went away when I turned 18. No jail time, barely. A lot of community service, a lot of wall painting, usually in gray to cover up lots of graffiti. Plus two years to pay off the fines, which I had just finished with my last paycheck. And it was just my luck. Judge Williams had a good memory, and he was here. You two know each other? Benson asked. We've met a couple of times, I said. Eight, ten, fifteen maybe, Judge Williams said, folding his arms and tapping one finger on his sleeve. Formally, keep your nose clean. I'm still watching. Yes, sir, I said. I joined the guys in the line and stood next to the groom, but every so often I caught the judge looking at me, the exact same way he did back in the courtroom when I had been in handcuffs. Not the fun kind of handcuffs. I can't believe how nervous I am, Benson said, tugging on his jacket and straightening out his pink rose boutonniere. Is that normal? You're asking me, I said, trying to avoid the judge's eyes. You're the first one of us to get married. We'll be the ones asking you. Do you know what? Benson asked. What? You look terrible. Benson smiled, wiping at the dirt on my jacket. I think your tie is ruined. Thanks, I said. Gunner, why do you bother dressing up? A beautiful guy said, walking to us. Brandon, my boyfriend. He wore an impeccable black tux with pink accessories, and he wore it nicely. I looked forward to taking it off of him tonight. I guess I don't do well at these kinds of things, I said. Brandon smiled and gave me a quick kiss. No, you don't. Gunner, let me fix your tie. Brandon led me away from the others, shaking his head. It's a good thing I love you. How did you destroy your clothes this time? I dropped a ring and it fell in a furnace duct, and I snagged my tie on a loose nail, and somehow my, I tore my tux, I said. And you got dirty as hell. Brandon undid my tie, shook it out, stretched it out, then wrapped his arms around me and gave me another kiss. And I bet you took the whole thing apart to get it, and I bet you put it all back together too. Probably even fixed it, cleaned it, so it works better now than before. What am I going to do with you? It only took 15 minutes, but I had to borrow tools from the janitor, I said. He helped. He had this nice gizmo. Sort of a miniature claw that we used to grab it. I'm going to have to get one of those. My hero, Brandon said, wrapping the tie around my neck and tying it. You single-handedly saved my sister's wedding. It wasn't her ring, I said. Brandon wiped the smudges off my face, straightened my hair, then went to a table and bouquet and stole the white rose. He attached it to my lapel. How do you get into so much trouble? Have I told you today how much I love you? I said, leaning down and kissing him. Not in the last hour, Brandon said. So you better tell me again. A scream rang through the reception center. I wrapped an arm protectively around Brandon and stepped in front of him, just like I would have done back in the old days. I can't get married now. A woman sobbed so loud I'm sure it shattered a window. Benson looked around. What the hell? A second sobby scream echoed, and a third. A high-pitched wail pierced our ears, then the sound of breaking glass. Stay here, love, Brandon said. You know how Tiana can get. I'll go check it out. Benson and the two bridesmaids, the groomsmen, went with him. I reached in my pocket, sifted through the keys and loose change, until I found the small folded rectangle. The most important thing I owned... I wanted to talk to Brandon about it when we had time. I already knew what he would say. A man entered from the far doors, also wearing a tuxedo and pink accessories. Ladies and gentlemen, the bride has run into a few complications with her dress. She needs ten minutes. Tiana and Brandon's dad? What happened? I asked. He either didn't hear me 
or ignored me. It didn't help that I hadn't been to the wedding practice yesterday. Some of us need a paycheck. It also didn't help that I borrowed their car four years ago. They pressed charges. I got a lot of community service. It also didn't help that his son had fallen in love with me and we lived together. The three groomsmen came back. One was smiling, one was scowling. What happened? I asked. Tiana and her friends had a last minute toast with red wine and it spilled all over the wedding dress, one of them said. Tiana must have spilled the entire bottle on it. We're going outside to get some air. Another said, do you want to join us? No, I'm waiting for Brandon, maybe a little later. Come get us when they decide to hold the wedding, the third one said. A high-pitched shriek echoed through the hall. I don't want anybody to see me. My dress is ruined. It's ugly. I can't get married. <clears throat> Babe, talk to me, Benson yelled. Brandon shouted, calm down. Everybody can hear you. Even Benson's granny, and she's got hearing aids. I loved Brandon so much. When nobody else bothered with me, he did. We dated in spite of his family's objections. Nobody messed with me, except my boyfriend, and I liked it when he did that. Get married in your sweats, Brandon yelled. It's just a dress. You're such, 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 such a man. You don't understand me. You don't understand a thing. You're stupid. I hate you. I don't want you at my wedding, and I don't want Gunner here either. You both leave. Don't spoil my wedding. Maybe someone should tell her that this place isn't very soundproof? Calm down, Benson said. You don't understand me either. I don't want to get married to you anymore. It's just a dress, Brandon said. Stop throwing a tantrum, the father of the bride said, and control yourself. Just wear your other dress. It looks nice, Benson said. It's not white, the bride screamed. Why does that matter, Brandon said. Don't you know anything? Virgins are supposed to wear white, she yelled. But you're not a virgin, Brandon said. You and Benson have done it at least a dozen times. I chuckled. So did half the crowd. Granny covered her mouth and blushed. Benson, you told my brother, the bride screamed. I don't want him at my wedding. Then she wailed and screamed, I don't want to get married anymore. Now everybody knows I'm pregnant. I fought the smile and said to Granny, Maybe I should take you to someplace quieter. I wouldn't have it, Granny said. It's just like one of them talk shows. Maybe they'll do a paternity test to see who the father is. It's not you, is it? No, ma'am. Me and Brandon are very serious about each other. The beautiful tones of Tiana screaming at the top of her lungs filled the hall. Get out. Get out. I don't want you here. I don't want anybody here. I don't want to get married. Judge Williams had not moved from his spot, arms folded, looking at me. I didn't do it this time, I said. I promise. Mm-hmm. I felt among the loose change in my pocket and made sure the folded piece of paper was still there. It held the most important things in the world. That paper was my marriage license application, folded into a nice, neat rectangle. Inside that re rectangle hid the ring I had made for Brandon, plus its companion, a larger ring for me. I'd used old parts from my bike and spent hours polishing them until they gleamed. I took a slow, wavering breath. Brandon's answer would be no surprise. A few people sat. Some mingled. The judge checked his watch, then sighed as he noticed the time. I could almost guess what he was thinking. It was probably the same thing he had said two years ago. Gunner, I'm disappointed in you. You're smart, good with your hands, but you keep making the wrong choices. I turned away so I wouldn't have to look at him. My phone said the ceremony was 30 minutes overdue. At least it wasn't my fault this time. I could hop on my Harley and leave, but I wanted to see Brandon again. Weddings always made me sentimental, and even though I would see him tonight at home, I wanted to see him before I left. With nothing to do, I wandered around the reception hall. One corner had a pile of both opened and unopened gifts. How many toasters and microwaves did they need? Another corner held pictures of Tiana and Benson through the years. 
Next to the place where the couple would take their vows, if we got that far, stood the wedding cake. Three tall pearl tears with fresh pink and white roses cascading from the top like a waterfall and onto a pink tablecloth. It had its own spotlight. A thousand white rose petals surrounded the cake, making the top look like pearlescent cobblestones. I pulled out the marriage license application I'd found online and read through it. As much as I could, I had filled it out. I took the two rings and stared at their dark gray sheen. I already knew what Brandon would say. What are you reading, love? Brandon said, wrapping his arms about me. Nothing important. I started folding the paper when Brandon grabbed it out of my hands. Let's see what isn't important, he said. I watched his face, especially his eyes, for any sign of hope. His face hardened, and he let out a sigh. We've already talked about this. I know, I said. I already knew what he would say, because he had said it before. I don't want to get married and end up like my folks, or my aunt. I don't want to go through that, Brandon said. Not everybody can be as lucky as your parents. I know, I said. It's just, weddings make me wish we had one. Why? What can a wedding give you that we don't already have? Brandon said, taking my hand. It's only a useless piece of paper. I know, it's stupid of me to want one, I said. I don't want to end up like Benson and my sister. They're fighting right now, on their wedding day. It's supposed to be the best day of their lives, something they should cherish forever. Look at them now. Listen to them now, I said. I don't want to ever fight with you. You'd win, Brandon said, pinching my bicep. What can one miserable party offer that we don't already have? I guess, I said. I wanted a chance to shove cake in your mouth, to slow dance with you. Let everyone know how much I love you. Brandon slightly shook his head, bit his lips, and gave me a sad smile. I love you too. What are you holding? I wanted us to give each other these. I held out the rings. I wouldn't cry. My emotions were under complete control. Brandon picked up the rings and stared at the dark sheen. Are these polished steel? I couldn't speak because the emotion clogged my throat. Did you make these? Brandon asked. They're beautiful. I stared at the cake because any moment now I'd start crying and I didn't like anybody seeing that side of me. Time to change subjects. That's the ring I dropped this morning. That's why I was so late and ruined my tux. You are the most thoughtful, amazing man I've ever met, Brandon said. I will love you forever, but we don't have to get married to wear them. I know. A single warm tear escaped my control. It slid down my cheek and splattered on the floor. I wanted something like this for us. I wanted to be your husband, bear your name, live with you for the rest of my life. We will do that, Brandon said. But I don't want to be in the 50% that gets divorced. You didn't have to go through that, and it's hell. I swallowed, took the paper, and folded it up. The paper and my dreams went back into my pocket. I love you, Brandon said. I always will but I don't want a wedding and all the baggage it brings. I understand. I had known what Brandon would say, but I had made the, ring, the rings anyway, filled out the application, dared to dream that we could be husband and husband. The least I can do, Brandon said, wiping my cheek, is see how you look in it. Give me your hand. He took the larger ring, held my left hand, and put it on. It looks great. I am so lucky you came into my life. I took the other ring, held, Brandon hand, held Brandon's hand, and said, I love. An ear-splitting scream came from the bride's changing rooms, then a slap. I dropped the ring. We both watched it fall, as if it were in slow motion. It hit the floor, bounced, then hit the floor again, bounced, then hit the floor, and rolled under all the chairs and people. My dreams rolled away. Catch it, Brandon shouted. Everyone turned and stared at us. Then they looked at the floor. 
Do you see it? I said. It's a ring. Everybody, check the floor. Our ring is somewhere, Brandon said. Can somebody turn the lights off all the way? Gunner made it for me. The lights brightened. I got down on my hands and knees and looked. Brandon did as well. So did half the crowd. Everybody looked. I thought a ring was supposed to be gold, Granny Nessie said. It's almost black. Kind of silvery, too. It's very pretty. Everybody stood up. A couple people cheered. It took me eight tries to get it right, I said. I spent a week trying to make it perfect. Well, I found it, Granny said. Doesn't it match the one on your finger? They're a set, Brandon said. One for each of us. Isn't that nice, Granny said. You must be the boyfriend I'm competing with. Catch. She flipped it at us. Once again, we watched it fall in slow motion. It didn't hit the floor. It hit the second tier of the cake in the middle of the fresh roses and sunk inside. Granny said, That's pretty good for an 85-year-old woman. Brandon and I stared at each other. The audience not having anything better to do, stared at us. Granny laughed. Everybody, I yelled, back away from the cake. That piece is mine. Nobody takes it. That got a chuckle from everybody. Even the judge smiled. Use that little spatula thingy and cut it out right now, Granny said. It couldn't have gone too deep. I leaned over and looked into the little hole. I think I see it. We could use that little claw thing the janitor had. By that time, we had a crowd of 20 or 30 people around us, all talking. I checked my phone. The ceremony was now 45 minutes late. Brandon folded his arms, lowered his head, and gave me one of his I dare you smiles. He usually saved those for the bedroom. The last time, he was the pirate with an eye patch and a plastic sword. You made that for me, Brandon said, turning away. You spent a week on it? Every day you do something that amazes me. Brandon, right? Judge Williams said, standing beside us. It's true. Fifty percent of all marriages end in divorce, but fifty percent end in marriage. It sounds like you've been together for a while. I think you might have something here. What do you mean? Brandon said. Gunner, did you ever finish your GED? A year ago, sir. Brandon helped me finish. Gunner, Judge Williams said. I keep track of people I've worked with, and you're one of them. You've had a rough few years, but you've turned your life around. Full-time job working as a motorcycle mechanic, and you're in a stable relationship. You haven't gotten in trouble with the law since you turned 18. What's that been? Two years? Thank you, sir. Brandon, it sounds like you've kept our boy on the right path. He's an amazing, thoughtful, and considerate man, Brandon said. I guess I'd be stupid if I let somebody else get him. You're taking him from me? Granny said. I wasn't sure if I dared to hope again. Is that a yes? Brandon gave me that I dare you look again. You are going to have to earn my yes. What do you mean? I said. Brandon walked to the wedding cake and wrapped his knuckles against the table a couple of times. I want you to get the ring. With your teeth. You do? I'll say yes. We have a judge here. You have the paperwork. We can be married right now, have the honeymoon tonight, and we can take the day off tomorrow to celebrate. We won't have any of the useless baggage that Benson and Tiana are dealing with. Your sister will kill me, I said. After the way she screamed at me, I don't care what she wants, Brandon said. I'll protect you. Granny said, we'll turn the cake around. She'll never notice. It's in the front of the cake, Brandon said. She'll notice. What flavor do you think it is? pink, I grinned, because I would do anything for Brandon. I plucked the roses out of the way and took a bite. Even the inside was pink, layered with strawberries. Somewhere behind me, the crowd chanted, eat, eat, eat. And I ate, dove in deeper and felt the top slip. I backed off, went in lower, and got frosting in my eyebrows, up my nose, caked down my shirt. Good frosting. It might have possibilities. I ate through a strawberry, a layer of frosting, more cake. Eat it, eat it, eat it, the crowd chanted. I could barely touch the ring with my tongue. One more bite. I grabbed the ring with my teeth. Take that, Brandon. 
About 20 farms took video of me emerging with the ring in my teeth. Brandon came to me, took the cake-encrusted ring from my teeth, and put it on his finger. Then he kissed me. I made sure he had frosting smeared everywhere. I don't think he'll get his deposit back on that, Tux. You taste good, Brandon said, pulling a strawberry from my cheek and eating it. I reached into the cake, took a handful, and stuffed it in his mouth. You don't know how long I've been wanting to do that. Everybody laughed. Brandon and I hugged, and I got cake and frosting all over him. Brandon took a handful of frosting and wiped it on my face. He proceeded to kiss it off. The cake looked like a bomb had gone off in it. Roses covered the floor, and petals and bits of cake and frosting were everywhere. We got a cheer, and I hugged Brandon so tight, I didn't want to let him go. I love you. Let's finish this, Brandon said. Gunner, from the kid you were four years ago to now, two different people. I never would have believed it. Judge Williams came to us, smiling. Looks like you found somebody to get you in the right kind of trouble. Congratulations on finding the ring. Let me look at your papers. I got them out of my pocket, unfolded them, accidentally smeared a little frosting on them. Judge Williams took them, and frowned. Gunner, Brandon, bad news. You only started the process, Judge Williams said. No fees, no wedding license. This is only the application. Brandon, I said, you finally said yes and trust me to screw everything up. Don't worry about it, Brandon said. Judge, what do we need to do? The judge smiled and passed the paper back to me. I'm not going to spoil the party. I'll marry you right now, but for it to be official, you come and see me at three this afternoon, and I'll help you with the paperwork. I know some people, and I think we can put the marriage license in the fast lane. Really? I said. Gunner, you've turned your life around, and I'm proud of you for that. Judge Williams offered his hand, and I shook it. He didn't mind all the frosting. Think of it as my gift to helping you stay on the right path. Thank you, I said. I held Brandon as close as I could. Judge William smiled. Dearly beloved, I took Brandon's hand in mine. Epilogue. We've been married 15 minutes. Brandon and I held each other's frosting-covered hands as everybody congratulated us. Nobody hugged us. I'm not sure who had more frosting on who. But with each kiss, we smeared more on each other. Best wedding I've ever been to, Granny said, and it wasn't supposed to be yours. Congratulations, Judge William said. Three o'clock. We'll be there, we both said. Get cleaned up first, the judge said, shaking his head and smiling as he left. The piano and cellist played some background music. Several of us danced. A lot of people left. It was more than an hour after the ceremony was supposed to start. Brandon and I held each other as we slow danced. As people left, they congratulated us, wished us well, took pictures. I leaned in close to Brandon and whispered, you look good in pink frosting. Let's buy some for tonight. Brandon looked at me and grinned. It's your turn to wear the eye patch. I set the alarm on my phone so he wouldn't forget about the judge because I was so happy. I might even forget my name. Finally, Benson, Tiana, the maids of honor, the father of the bride, all came out of the bride's room. The bride was all smiles again and, and holding hands with Benson. She had traded dresses with one of her bridesmaids. Then she saw the cake, the almost empty hall, and all the frosting and cake covering us. My wedding. What happened? Where is everybody? Gunner, what did you do? Benson said, where's the judge? Judge Williams left a little while ago. Probably had a court to run. After all, he is a judge. I turned to Benson and said, everybody to get tired of waiting for you two, so we had our own ceremony. One clarification, Benson said. You cried, so you're the bride? Bride? Tiana yelled. This is supposed to be my wedding. Brandon said, you can still have some cake. Did you know it had strawberries in it? Granny hobbled up on her walker, cackling, 
Since you chose him over me, I had to get revenge. Wait until you see your motorbike.